My name is Troy Rollins. I was a student athlete at the University of Washington for four years. I recently just finished my collegiate baseball career and I'm here today to help you and your future student athlete prepare for this journey of a lifetime. The transition from being a high school star to being a freshman on a Division I college team is quite the adjustment. Not only does it require putting more time and effort into your sport, but you are also expected to compete in the classroom at some of the top universities in the country. The media also portrays that student athletes are campus celebrities when in reality life as a student athlete is more hard work behind the scenes than glamour between the lines. I think they underestimate the competitive level of and the demands in the classroom compared to where they, even if they were really well prepared um, coming out of high school. They usually get hit between the eyes the first time they have exams. I think we do a lot on, and I won't spend a lot of time, but the transition on and academics, we have you know tutoring and advising and study table and all those things that that provide structure and discipline. You know, it's it, it, it's, it's it's a long process, and you know, it, it, it's something that when you when you put in the effort and you put in the time, you'll eventually get rewarded. It may not be as soon as you want it to be rewarded, but it'll come back to you at some point. And so, like for me, it was just learning how to stick with it. You know, school always comes first, and you always got to remain. You know, in the back of your mind, you got to think, hey, I got to stay eligible. I got to still pass this class, otherwise I can't play. So for me, like, I, I get my grades. I get the highest grades I possibly can, and I still got to stay afloat. Student athletes, like many college students, are highly connected to their parents. 48% of NCAA men's athletes and 62% of women's athletes communicate with their parents at least once per day. You know, I, I always talk to my parents at least twice a week, three times a week, you know, make sure they know what's going on and how I'm doing. Student athlete has to make their own choices and decisions, clearly. But, you know, I'm a, my parents used to always tell me, surround yourself with winners. People that are going to be positive, supportive, kick you in the butt when you need to, um, but be good, ethical, honest people that are going to help you. A study published by Sports Health was conducted at the Georgetown University Medical Center. This study revealed that depression levels were twice as high in current student athletes compared to former college athletes from years ago. What I see is the day-to-day -day reality. And the day-to-day -day reality is our student athletes are unbelievably busy. They manage so many things simultaneously. In many cases, they're sleep deprived. They're trying to do a full-time job plus in their sport that they love and hold down a full-time academic load at a Division I, one of the best public institutions in the country. But I don't see the glitz and the glamour that I often see on ESPN. I see the grind and all the work that it takes to get there. So it's not a bad thing for young, or for parents, even with young children, to understand warning signs for depression or anxiety or just have a basic awareness so they know what they're, what they're seeing. Brian Hainline became the NCAA's first chief medical officer in January 2013. He quickly realized that mental health remains a top concern for the NCAA and its members. He's a neurologist and he's realizing mental health. So from there, you know, task force, all the things that you've seen, and they just, with a bunch of other associations, published like the best practices for mental health. The physical is so much separate from the mental because we know that it's way more integrated than we'd like to acknowledge. So my hope with parents is that the relationship is deeper than that and they can remember that you're human too and that like you're dealing with human things. According to an NCAA study of student athlete social environments done in 2014, 40% of male athletes and 28% of female athletes said students on campus assume I'm not a good student because I'm an athlete. I walk in already with a preconceived idea that oh this guy is out to just you know cheat his way through courses. If I, if I feel like you're idolizing me, you know, I, I feel I get uncomfortable and I want to just, you know, kind of avoid the idea that I'm an athlete. I want to just be treated as another student. That way I can connect with everyone equally. But when they try to put that barrier or put me on a pedestal like that, then it's kind of hard to connect with people like that. So I do like the attention, but it comes out of place. I hope that this will help with this transitionary period. Parents and incoming student athletes who have realistic expectations and understanding of the Division I life 
can better manage the stress that can come along with it. For more information on the best mental health practices, visit the NCAA website, click on the Health and Safety tab, then find the Mental Health link.